Next question. I just want to say thank you because I feel like all of you handled this whole situation, not just this cruise, but the next cruise. I'm sorry, where are you? Just so I know where to look. Oh, center. <laughs> With grace and uh, humility, and I really appreciate that. Thank so, you. Uh, this is this is only my second cruise with Joko, and I'm just curious because I haven't been to the other eight or so. If this has been the most challenging uh, <laughs> from a management perspective for well, you, that's and, funny. Yeah, sorry. And then going and then going forward, how do you see it, this changing because of this year? Logistically speaking, like if world events had not been what they had. I personally feel like we had our ducks best in a row. Yeah, we were all set for the smoothest. <laughs> like, the, the machinery has been assembled and fine-tuned and oiled. It was, like, ready to go. And we were here and to be like, this is going to be the easiest cruise ever. For us. It's, it's basically, every year is, is its own panic. But it's like Princess Bride, um, she, the, uh, the swamp. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the fire swamp. Yeah, it's like a fire swamp. We figured out uh, where the explosions are, the ROUSs, we know how to avoid them. I don't think they're actually real anyway. <laughs> so, I would say, uh, no, not exceptionally, just the nature of what we've dealt with has been very different. Yeah, certainly from the perspective of management's overall stress and agita level in the three weeks coming up to the cruise were heightened as well as being on the cruise. Well, even then, Drew, you were talking about how we now have more people that are working for us year-round and also in the run-up. We didn't used to have that, so we would be panicked about things like making sure everything gets on the ship, which is now locked down. Yeah, this, in some ways, the lovely thing about this year is that I don't know if we could have done this before. At yes. all. Uh, like, we were, we're very proud to have had you all here and to have been able to provide this cruise and write statements with uh, at a frantic pace for the two weeks preceding sale. Um, but uh, in, in answer to uh, both parts of your question, for example, from a management perspective, one thing we will be having many discussions about after this cruise, uh, and I'm making no declarations here, just to be clear, but for example, is regarding the land concerts. And for those of you who are new, uh, Joko Cruise used to be a smaller group, and we used to always be able to attend all the events at the same time, until we grew to the size of a full charter, uh, at which point we had to, for example, split up the audience in two for the main concerts and such. And we were striving at that time to continue to keep events, at least one event that everybody could attend all at once because that sense of community was important but both to us and to the Sea Monkeys. Uh, and that's when we uh, came up with the idea of let's have a concert in one of our ports of call uh, and everybody will be there and, and it'll sort of remind us and it'll be a, both a visual and an emotional tie to that whole sense of we're one big community. Um, Without getting into specific numbers, that, that land concert started four years ago in Loretto. Uh, the land concert now costs literally 10 times what it did in Loretto, just to our growing in size, uh, our working in the Caribbean versus uh, Mexico. You know, when, when you try and put on one of these events on an island country, uh, it presents a whole new degree of challenges, not the least of which is the fact that the weather in uh, uh, the Caribbean is far more mercurial than Some of you may know what we're talking about. Um, and it is a consideration we have to talk about and get the input from sea monkeys. We're not saying we got to dump this damn land concept, but we do have to discuss it takes a tremendous amount of time and effort and worry and uh, uh, not throughput, what's the word, a bandwidth on the part of this cruise to put that event together, an event that can very easily just get ruined by events totally beyond our control. Uh, and we want to, we're, we're going to be doing some math as to are there other ways to maintain that sense of community without 
interrupting our huge week-long festival event on a cruise ship to all get off and throw a festival on land in a place that we've never thrown a festival before. Um, so that's for that's when you ask about how might things change going forward. That is a thing we we are is among things we need to discuss and consider and look at options. And again, I'm not saying we're not doing it anymore or we'll never do it again, uh, but that's one of the things we have to look into. And to address general things, right now the cruise industry is just trying to adapt to everything that's being thrown at it. There may be things about how they change things. For certain, we have seen um, heightened sanitation, which, been, which has been terrific, um, but we're going to need to follow their cues. But as ever, we'll adapt to how things adapt. And the nice thing is, um, a cruise like ours, we're coming because we want to all be together. And, um, and that means we're in a great position uh, going forward and we'll all adjust to it together. And also just to, to clarify, if, um, we're not saying we would want to you know, close the land concerts so we can put all that money back in our grubby pockets. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're saying we get, are there ways we could redeploy those resources, both financial and, and human resources, towards other awesome possibilities? For right, that's something that can't be rained out. Yeah. <laughs> right. And one of the things that makes this this cruise and this event, this community so strong and wonderful is that you know we have every year we sort of watch what you do and listen to what you thought about it, and we have always followed you. Um, and so we we're every year we uh, spend a lot of effort post cruise uh, evaluating you know what did we do, what did we spend our time and money on, what did they do, what did they enjoy and what is the what is the most efficient thing that we can put on that uh, uses our resources in a way to support the stuff that that you guys uh, want to participate in and, and this is the first of probably many obligatory uh, requests to please fill out the survey that we send out at the end of the cruise we read all the responses and we care so much about what you think was literally adjusting it yesterday to take out <laughs> Did you get off the ship at Grand Turk? <laughs> Probably good that we didn't leave that one in. Certainly would have, would have been hilarious to see how many people said yes. You know what, we would probably get mostly yeses knowing this crowd. <laughs>